always an honor and a privilege to have an, an, an opportunity to see the faces. Uh, you know us, and some of you spend hours a day with us, listening to Lou for three hours a day, or listening to me for three hours a day. And we know that we're out there, but we don't always get to see your faces. So it's always an honor and a humbling experience when you come out and you show your support for the radio station. And as you know, it's been an interesting week for me. And uh, you know, they say the biggest changes in life always are opportunities for growth. And, and I, I like to think of this as a really, really painful growth spur in my life. Um, but I'm going to take advantage of the opportunity that I have to spend time with you here in South Florida. And I will remain your midday host from noon until noon. I think of all the times that I used to journey up to Washington, D.C., and all of the radio hosts would jockey for where they were going to get to broadcast live from. And of course, the best spot is right next to this gentleman. So you put in your, uh, you know, your kind of request weeks and months in advance with whoever was hosting the rally, and then you kind of wondered if you'd get your shot. And I've been blessed because year after year, I was stationed next to Mr. Lou Dobbs. And some years it was more exciting than others. Last year we were up at a fair rally, and uh, in the middle of Lou's broadcast, somebody came into the room who wanted to have a rather heated conversation with Lou. And as a result, my uh, assistant ended up getting thrown into a wall. And uh, it was quite, it was one of those most remarkable moments. But uh, I'm always honored to be uh, in his presence because I always learn something. And at this stage in my life, there's not a whole lot of people I would consider mentors or people that I look up to. And certainly Mr. Independent is one of the people that I look up to. Everybody knows him now, of course, as your afternoon drive host on 850 WFTL. Most of us have watched him since the inception of CNN. As a matter of fact, when I think of the, radio, of the television station CNN, the first person that I think of is Mr. Lou Dobbs. And all of the lessons that I learned about how the economic engine of this country is part of our political system, and watching him grow from probably the preeminent voice on business to one of the preeminent voices on politics was a tremendous thrill for me. And of course, when the radio became even bigger and better, and he left CNN, I have to tell you the truth, I haven't watched CNN since. for the presidency. People have more confidence in Lou Dobbs than they do in any of the 10 candidates that are currently being proposed for the Republican Party. There are people who would do whatever it took to get him elected, and that's a pretty uh, staggering thing for someone who has spent their life informing and entertaining the public. So I really can only say this. If you want to learn something and be entertained at the same time, there's not a whole lot of radio hosts that I would tell you to listen to, but for sure, I would tell you to listen to the one and only Mr. Lou Dobbs.
in which I invariably say uh, I have the smartest audience in broadcasting, and I'm sure that's also true uh, of all of you here in South Florida. What an honor it is to, uh, to have you spend part of your evening with us. Uh, I want to, if I may, you know what I'm going to do? Uh, I'm going to do it this way. That's okay. Can we do that? One of the, uh, is that okay in the back? Can you hear me all right? Yes? Yeah. All right. I want to start by sort of explaining where I think we are today and where I think we're headed as a nation. And I want to tell you, after the midterm elections on November 2nd, this is going to be a lot more fun evening than we might have had otherwise. <laughs>
a superior education, uh, born into a family with greater wealth, who had greater travel. He or she always, almost without exception, felt an obligation to the society in which, in which they were born. That started to change, and it changed rapidly from the 1960s forward. The elites in this country no longer had a robust obligation. They no longer had a sense of obligation, it appears, or at least not enough of them, to serve the public. The expression public servant is exactly on point. Its connotation, its meaning, precise, to serve the public. And yet, in 2010, we have reached a point in which the critical decision on November 2nd was this. Will the government of the United States work for the people, or will the people of this great country be working for a government? The answer you sent on November 2nd makes all the difference in this nation's future. I truly don't believe we could have waited for this watershed moment until 2012. You ended one party rule and you served notice that the government of the people, by the people, and for the people still stands. And with that, Because within it is the blueprint for our future. All we have to do is work and continue to build. Because you and I, as I look around this audience, there are many of you who have experienced as well as personally know what I know and what I've experienced. That is, over the course of the past 40 years, I believe we have squandered more wealth than we can ever compensate the next generation for. Tell me. We have made more public policy mistakes than we can possibly apologize for to the next generation. But this generation must take on the hard work of rebuilding this nation, insisting upon the values that made this a great nation, make certain those values are honored and respected throughout in our communities, our neighborhoods, our homes, and yes, in the nation's capital. I want to tell you that I am not only happy, uh, joyful, not only thrilled, <laughs> I am so excited about the prospects for this country right now that I can't stand it. <laughs> The Dow Jones Industrials today dropped 178 points. <laughs> Not so happy about that. But we are seeing an economy in recovery. It's fragile, it's delicate, and cannot withstand ideologues and fools who happen to have the title congressman or congresswoman or senator. <laughs> 